This is really impressive. You can train your own AI image generation model and it's fast, easy, and the results are really good. But why do you even want to train your own model? When you train your own model, you're telling the AI that you want a certain type of image every time you generate with that model. It might be a specific style that you want to use. It might be a character, maybe a face, or maybe an object, like if you want to be able to do product photos. I'm going to show you how easy this is to do, what the process involves, and what the results look like with OpenArt's new model model training using Flux. And a big thank you to OpenArt for sponsoring this video. I'm logged into OpenArt. I'm on the homepage over on this left menu, midway down, click on my stuff. And then down at the very bottom of that is trained models. Click that button and up pops my models. On the my models page, you just click this plus sign to train a new model and you can see all the other models you've created. Ignore the ugly guy over here on the right. I think it picked the goofiest picture it had for the thumbnail on both of these. So we're going to click this plus sign to train your own model. The first thing we need to do is tell it what kind of model or fine tuning we're trying to do. Are we going for a style, a character, a face, or an object? The style might be something like watercolor or pencil drawing or cartoon, anime, cyberpunk, diesel punk, worlds made of candy. I'll show you that one in a minute. Or something along those lines where it's not that you necessarily want to have the same object or person or character in every image but you want the style of every image to have a certain look. These would be good for game assets, cartoons, children's books, and that kind of thing. If you're doing a human character, face is the one that you want. I use the face type model training or fine tuning to create a model that would generate images of me that I can use for thumbnails. Because the last thing I want to do is have to take a picture of myself every time I want to use one on a thumbnail. The last type of model would be object. The example they have here is a bottle of perfume or cologne, whatever it is. If you're creating a visual story that has a spaceship in it, you could train a model on what you want your spaceship to look like and then use that model to generate the images. Of of your spaceship. We're going to do a character and we need to give it a name. I'm going to call this one lovable monster. And now I need to describe the character. It says that this is very important for model quality. Open art recommends keeping this short and focused, something like cartoon character, anime girl, elf ranger. I'm going to say lovable monster character. We'll see how that works out. And if we need to, we can edit that part later. Now it wants somewhere between four and 64 image samples. The images need to be at least 384 pixels by 384 pixels and not safe for work is not allowed in here. The only way to feed your images in here is to upload them from your computer. So if you created your training images on OpenArt, unfortunately, you've got to download them to your computer and then re-upload them here in this step. I've already downloaded mine, so I will just drag them all in and drop them right here. I'm using the maximum number, 64 images. Once you've got all the images that you want to use, you just click on this big blue train your model button. Once that's submitted, if we come back to the My Models page, you'll see that your model is being trained and so far it's been taking me maybe five or ten minutes to train a new model. Yesterday it was more on the five minute side. Today it's running a little bit longer. Maybe there's more users on the system today. While the model training is happening, I'll show you a bigger version of the images that I uploaded so you can see what we're going for with this model. These are all my happy little lovable monster characters. I wanted a fun little monster that you wouldn't mind having around. I basically wanted to make sure we focus on these oversized eyes, the kind of furriness, bright colors. And I wanted to make sure there's some variation in the backgrounds and some other things because I don't want it to just create the exact same image every time. I wanted to create a monster that looks like any of these monsters, but I wanted to be able to be put in different scenarios and situations and environments. So that's why I varied up some things in the background and even in the monster itself. Once your model's ready to go, you'll have two options. You can create with it or publish it. If you publish it, that means it's available to other open art users to use. If you do want to share it with you, the open art community, I would recommend that you go ahead and create a few things with it yourself first. That way you make sure it's working the way you expected it to. If you want away from this page while your model is training and you want to get back to it, you can just click my stuff over on the left hand menu of the open art homepage and click trained models down at the bottom. We want to go ahead and create some images using our fine tuned model here. So we can click this big blue create button and that'll take us to the image generation page and it will automatically make our model the one that we just selected. And while you can go through the my stuff and train 
models pathway, you can also from the home page, just click on create image. And then up here on the left where it says model, click that. By default, you'll be on the public models page. You can just click the my models tab and then select the model that you want to use. And it will update right here in the model selection. We'll leave the model weight, which is at 0.8, the model description. We're going to leave that alone for prompt. I'm going to say something really simple, a monster in the park. I'm not going to do anything with the other settings, but I am going to change the number of images to two. The default is one. And because this is a flux based fine tuning model, it costs five credits per image to generate. At first I raised an eyebrow at that, but then when I saw the quality of the generations, I think it's probably more efficient because it's taking me a lot less generations to get what I want. So in the long run, I think it's either break even or I might even be saving credits. All right, so click create. And here's two variations of the little monsters that we created. It looks like the model knew exactly what I wanted that model to create. What if I try and add something that wasn't in any of the images that I provided it to train on? Let's try a monster wearing dark sunglasses. <laughs> Not exactly what I had in mind, but it's pretty funny, I gotta say. The frames are definitely dark. This one are pretty low on his oversized eyes. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. I was looking for more blacked out lenses, but this is one of those surprise happy results. Now I'm going to try a monster in an amusement park. And here's a couple of variations. If you want to make sure it's looking more like the images you supplied, you can move this weight up to one. And if you want to give the AI some more creativity with your monster image, you could take it down, we'll say to 0.4. And at that level, it has some resemblance to the images that we trained it on. Let's switch models from our lovable monster over to Candy World. This is a style type model, and I trained this on images where everything is made of candy. I'm going to bring my weight back up to 0.8. For the prompt, I'm going really simple, just a house. I'm not saying anything about candy. I'll increase my number of images to two and create. And by golly, I got a candy house. If I go ahead and take my weight all the way up to one, leave the prompt the same, a house, you got to admit the result is sweet. Let's go with Main Street in a small town. I feel like this street is called Candy Lane. Maybe it's in Candyland. What if we set a spaceship in a whimsical galaxy? How about a building constructed with chocolates and Skittles? Looks like a sweet place to hang out. If you'd like to see the images that I use for this Candy World fine tuning model, if you come back to your My Models and click on the three dots of any model that you have, and then click on Show Training Images, well, right there they are. Indeed, they're kind of tiny. I can zoom a little bit here and you can see I used, it looks like 31 images here to train this model. Remember when you're training a model, the things that remain the same consistent throughout every image in that training data set, that's what the model is going to pick up on. And the stuff that varies from image to image are the things that the model is going to say, it's okay for me to change that part. That's an oversimplified rule of thumb for fine tuning models. Now, I know you're wondering how well this thing does with faces and creating a model based on a person. So here we go. We'll switch the model. I'll come to the My Models tab. I'm going to pick the Bob Face Portrait Model. It drops it right in up here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this weight all the way up because I don't really want an image that looks kind of like me. It's supposed to look like me. Unfortunately, I am what I am. For the prompt, let's say professional modeling headshot portrait of a man with short blonde hair wearing a black shirt, gold chain, and clear framed eyeglasses. I'm going to ignore all the other settings here, except for the number of images. I will take that up to two and click create. And you tell me, I think that looks an awful lot like me. The smile on this one on the left is a little bit goofy, but I'm not saying it's wrong. Now let's try a snapshot of a man with very short blonde hair wearing clear framed eyeglasses standing in line at an amusement park. And I think either of these guys could probably use my ID and get away with it. I assume this is a total coincidence, but something really interesting here. Look at this guy behind me, the picture on the left, where he is. And then look at the picture on the right. It's like the same guy. Like this picture just got split in half. Wild. Something else to pay attention to is there's a lot of other people in both of these images and they aren't all just copies of me. A lot of times when you train a model on an individual person and there's other people in a photo that you generate with it, it ends up being just clones. The person that you train the model on just shows up as every person in the image. And there's way too much of me. In fact, this is enough just looking at me. If you want to fine tune your own models using Flux in OpenArt, that feature is available in all paid plans. Beginning with the starter plan at $14 a month, you get two fine tuned models. In Hobbyist, you get four fine tuned models. And in Pro, you get up to eight fine tuned models. 
Starters 14 bucks a month. Hobbyist is a plan that I'm on is $26 a month, but it looks like they're doing the 50% off deal for annual plans. So that would make starters seven bucks a month or hobbyist $13 a month if you pay annually. In the description of this video, right below the link to open art, which is an affiliate link, there's a coupon code for 10% off. And the last time I checked, the 10% did work with this 50%. So definitely check that out if you're interested in training your own models. It's very easy in open art now with this flux fine tuning. I've tried with other models and other platforms and it is a constant struggle to try and figure out what am I doing wrong in my training images? Are they not high quality enough? Do I have too many where this person's turned to the left and that's why they're all coming out with the person turned to the left? I think I've got a good variety of images of my subject, but I still have oversampling. It's a whole thing. I was really surprised the first time I used this Flux model fine tuning in open art, went to create my first set of images and they came out decent. I don't think I've ever had that experience. Usually I got to do a whole lot of fiddling with the training data set to get it just right or really work with those prompts to hone in and get what I want. Now, if you fine tune a model here and it's not behaving the way that you think it should, I would recommend experimenting with the weight slider, either increasing or decreasing that and also working with your prompt. For instance, the only thing I have to do to get an image of my monster character when I'm using my monster model is type a monster whatever in the prompt. A monster in a park, a monster sitting on a couch, and it does its thing. And that's a character style model. For my everything's made of candy, which is a style type model, I make the prompt simple things like a house, a dog, a car, and it makes it out of candy. I don't even have to say candy in the prompt. When it comes to my face type model, the one that makes this, if I just use the words a man as the prompt, it can come out with me being green like the Incredible Hulk and having big horns, but I'll have my face. So that's why in those prompts, I specified a man with short blonde hair, clear frame glasses, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, if for some reason you would want to use it, my Candy World model is public on open art. And I'm also going to make my lovable monster model public on open art if you want to use those lovable monsters for anything. I really hope this video was helpful to you, or at least you found some entertainment in it. I absolutely appreciate you hanging out with me, and I hope you come back and join me for the next video.